Well, new comic book day is tomorrow. It's time to take a look at the books coming out so I can tell you what's on the pull list. Welcome back to Comics Are Dope. I'm BJ Kicks, and this is The Pull List. It's my weekly video series where I survey all the books coming out. I'll tell you what's on my pull list, what's on the chopping block, and what's on the maybe list. Books I'll be making a game day decision about. This week, not even going to hold you, is another DC heavy week. And honestly, it's welcome. But let's go ahead and talk about the book that I am most excited for. And this week, that is Static. Shadows of Dakota, issue number six. Now, Static Shadows of Dakota is written by Vita Ayala and Nicholas Draper Ivy with art by Nicholas Draper Ivy. And the series has been amazing. Like, this is the best of Milestone Returns, in my humble opinion. Now, Shadows of Dakota has been following Virgil, Static, um, and Ebon, who uh, you may know or remember from the animated series. They've been on sort of twin journeys, uh, fighting a common enemy or at least trying to learn about a common enemy. And they've gone through pretty common traumas together. But so far, they've been on separate paths. And there's been a couple of warnings from Ebon to Virgil, like, hey, don't get in my way. And well, last issue sort of ends with a proposition for them to team up in some way. And in my opinion, this sort of gets to the heart of who Virgil is as a character. So even though we ended on that cliffhanger, we only got two issues left, issue six and issue seven. And I imagine that we're going to see Ebon and Static sort of fighting alongside each other for a little bit until Static realizes that Ebon's methods are just way too extreme. Ebon's got a little too much Magneto in him, if we want to keep going with that uh, comparison. But I have been loving this series. The, the, the writing and the emotional threads really pair well with the art and the pacing in the book. It's just been a masterclass, if I'm honest. Loving this book. I would almost never recommend an issue number six that heavily, only because I want you to be able to jump into these books easily. But this series has just been awesome. Every issue knocks it out of the park. I'm really loving it. So Static Shadows of Dakota issue number six is out this week with a cover price of $3.99. I'm grabbing cover A. I'm also grabbing cover B. I'm probably not grabbing the one in 25 variant. It's probably going to be too expensive for me, but this is a great book. $3.99. Now, since we're talking about DC Comics, let's go ahead and finish off the list, uh, starting with Action Comics issue 1057. Now, again, this month we have seen we're seeing a bunch of titles resuming restarting since the night terrors event so action comics took a break a couple of months ago and in the middle of that or last i read we had superman kind of fighting metallo i do not remember the conclusion of that story maybe it didn't conclude but either way this is a brand new story arc great brand new jumping in point for action comics written by philip kennedy johnson last i checked art was by who was doing the art? Rafa Sandoval, which, by the way, Rafa Sandoval on art. That's all you ever want in an Action Comics book. It's really been good. Uh, Action Comics and the main Superman title have been doing a great job of sort of building off each other and using some of the same common story threads or sort of building on the same status quo. Really enjoyed seeing uh, the response to Lex being in prison and Super Court being in existence, all of that. It was working well in Action Comics. Um, but Action Comics is like the Superman family book. If, uh, if we want to go back to sort of rebirth terms, this reminds me a lot of James Tynan's Detective Comics. And it's been really, really compelling. Phil Kennedy Johnson has been just writing the book of his life with this Action Comics run for the last couple of years, in my opinion. Action Comics 1057. It's got a cover price of $4.99. I'm grabbing cover A. And the next book on the DC pull list is the Batman Catwoman Gotham War Red Hood issue number one. So the Batman Catwoman Gotham War is not one of those events where you can just read Batman or just read Catwoman and be satisfied. No, each book has been building very heavily on each other. And I imagine that this Red Hood uh, special is going to do the same. I think there's going to be two issues of the Red Hood chapters, but... If you didn't know, Batman 
and Catwoman are in the middle of a pretty big rift about how crime should be handled in Gotham. And perhaps most surprisingly is how much of the Bat family has taken Catwoman's side in all of this. And of course, the one person that you would expect to take Catwoman's side in this argument is Jason Todd, the Red Hood. So we're going to see more from Jason Todd in this issue, more of his uh, mindset, more of his methodology. It's written by Matthew Rosenberg. It's going to be good. It's going to be really good. Cover price on this is $3.99. I'm grabbing cover A. And the next book on the DC Comics pull list is Detective Comics, issue 1074. Detective Comics written by Ram V. And well, that's the street. This one's got art by Dustin Wynn. Now, this is actually continuing the threads that were started long ago around these detective comics. This is the last couple of issues of the Gotham Nocturne story arc with Bruce Wayne versus Edward Orgum and just kind of fighting for the soul of Gotham. In this issue, it looks like we are going to get, uh, yeah, an asthma demon is tethered to Batman. So this is building up on all the supernatural stuff that Ram V has been doing. I think I'm somehow still a couple issues behind, even though I had a two month break to get caught up, which is just how I do things apparently. But Type of Comics issue 1074 has got a cover price of $4.99. I'm grabbing cover A. And the next book on the DC Comics pull list, if I'm honest, is a maybe list candidate, but I'm going to pick it up. This is The Flash, issue number one. Flash, written by Cy Spurrier with art by Mike Deodato Jr. Now, uh, Cy Spurrier, in my experience, has been more of a heady writer. Cy Spurrier had been doing backup stories in Detective Comics um, with this like weird supernatural figure that <laughs> they've kind of run around in Gotham's sewers. Um, Cy Spurrier, it's also responsible for like the Nightcrawlers and the, the Legion of X type stuff over in the X-Men universe. All of Cy Spurrier's work that I've been exposed to so far has just been a little bit too much or so far on the supernatural side that I find it a little difficult to wrap my head around because I kind of treat comics like Saturday morning cartoons and I don't spend a ton of time in the weeds of the world building and sort of chewing on the story if you will. So Cy Spurrier has been sort of hit and miss for me, but those who love having something to like really latch onto typically love Cy Spurrier's works. And a lot of people have been hyping this issue of The Flash. A lot of the other comic creators who have read Cy Spurrier's Flash number one are like, yo, this is the best Flash debut since Mark Wade. And I mean, that's high praise considering Joshua Williamson had like a hundred issues run on The Flash that everybody loves. Now, what I don't know is if this is going to focus on Barry or Wally West. So let's let's find out. Okay. Okay. I'm in. It's a Wally West story. So I was so concerned that with Jeremy Adams run coming to an end, that was just going to be the end of Wally West and this prominence that he's been enjoying in the DC universe. Cy Spurrier is writing a Wally West Flash story complete with the Flash family. Um, so Hey, this should be good. This should be really good. I'm pretty excited about it. Cover price on this is $4.99. I'm grabbing cover A. And the last book on the DC Comics pull list is actually on the chopping block. I am not going to pick up this issue. And that is Green Arrow issue number four. Now, Green Arrow written by Josh Williamson. Art has been by Sean Isaacs. I want to say next issue, they're switching it up. Um, but it's been good. It's been a good book. The art has been phenomenal. The story has been good. But this is a book for Green Arrow fans. This is paying off things that have happened in Green Arrow history over the years. And unfortunately, I wasn't a part of that history. I didn't read that history. And so it doesn't always hit the same for me, even as it's been a good and entertaining story. So I decided, you know what? I've subscribed to DC Universe Ultra. I pay extra to make sure that I get access to books just one month after they're released. I do not have to buy every DC book in print, no matter how much I'm enjoying the dawn of DC. So I decided I'm going to save $4 this week by dropping Green Arrow and just waiting for it to populate on my iPad. Uh, so by not buying that, I'm saving $3.99. 
That's a great cover, though. And if you are interested in this story, apparently there's a point where, I don't know, did Ollie get saved by Parallax? And now Parallax is coming back to collect. I don't know. It looks cool. I just never read that part of Green Lantern or Green Arrow lore. And so, yeah. Anyway, that's not on the list this week. I saved $4 by not buying it. And that means I'm done with the DC Comics books for the week. And my grand DC total is $23. It's a DC heavy week for sure. But let's move on over to the House of Ideas. Over at Marvel Comics, there are two books on the pull list, the first of which is The Avengers, issue number five. Now, The Avengers um, is written by Jed McKay with art, art by Ivan Fiorelli. Last few issues have been by Charles Villa, Villa. but anyway, The Avengers has been fine since Jed McKay started. I'm always trying to test out some new Marvel title and typically testing out the team book is a great way to get me interested. So far, I don't feel super interested or invested in any of the characters, perhaps except for T'Challa. And that's only because I've been invested in T'Challa's saga for the last year through John Ridley's run and now moving into Eve Ewing's run. Um, but so, I don't know. Something about this Avengers title isn't fully gripping me, but I am enjoying it enough. Kang the Conqueror has come with like a warning from the future. And basically he's giving the Avengers a bunch of assignments like, hey, look, go here at this time and this place. You can stop this many people from dying. I need you to know that you can trust me because I need your protection from this other threat that's coming for me. And so it's been interesting enough just seeing the Avengers in action, but I don't know. There's something that is not quite connecting for me. So I don't know how long this is staying on the pull list, but for now, the Avengers number five is out this week with a cover price of $3.99. I'm grabbing cover A. And the last book on the Marvel Comics poll list this week is Jean Grey, issue number two. Jean Grey, written by Louise Simonson with art by Bernard Chang. I'm not even going to lie. Issue one wasn't on my radar because I thought this was the typical thing that Marvel's doing. Let's find a legacy creator and give them a book set in the continuity back then. And it's basically a throwaway story from an era that, you know, has long passed. That is not what we got with Jean Grey number one. I didn't even, I didn't even buy the issue up front. Um, I checked it out later on and this plays up directly with the events of the Hellfire Gala. If you know, you know. And let's just say Jean Grey is reflecting on her life uh, in a very specific way for a very specific reason. And in issue number one, we sort of see her life flashing before her eyes and she's realizing all the points where she probably should have made a different decision. Now, what really sells this for me is one is a great Jean Grey character story and character uh, study, but the art by Bernard Chang is amazing from the layouts, the overall composition, the line work. Uh, I don't know who's on colors, but the colors add a lot too. Uh, Marcelo Mayolo, man, this book is just, beautiful and it makes you want to read it even more. Typically, this is the type of book I would save for a trade paperback just because, you know, it doesn't necessarily seem essential to the overall fall of X story, but you never know. And it's just an awesome Jean Grey study, if nothing else. So uh, Jean Grey issue number two is out this week and it's on my pull list with a cover price of $3.99. I'm grabbing cover A. And that's it. That's the Marvel books. That's the Marvel pull list. So if I stick to the list, my Marvel books are going to cost me $8 this week. And as we skip on over to the Indies, there is just one book on the pull list, and that is Firepower, issue number 27. Firepower, written by Robert Kirkman, with art by Chris Samney. And it's been a great series. I can't lie. It lost a ton of momentum with me because there was a huge break between issues 24 and 25, or maybe it was 25 and 26. And now we know that issue 30 is going to be the end of the Firepower series. And if I'm honest with you, 
I'm probably not going to read another issue until issue 30 is out and I can just binge the last, you know, five issues of the series. But it's been really good. Owen went on this quest to find his birth parents. He found more than he bargained for. He tried to lay the fight down. The fight came back to him. He's been engaged. He's been teaching his whole family how to use the firepower. He's fighting against this dragon. It's, it's, it is at the point where it is just big, epic action. Every issue with a really intense emotional core as well, or emotional thread, uh, woven through as well. It's just the, the series release schedule is the only thing in the way for me. And so if I read it outside of its publishing schedule, that won't matter. If you're reading this series, though, you should definitely grab this issue. Firepower issue 27 has a cover price of $3.99. And I'm grabbing cover A. And that's the only indie book on the pull list this week. And so my indies are going to cost me $4 this week. And that brings me up to a grand total of $35. $35 this week, $15 below my budget. I'm happy. I'm happy with that total. Not a bad week at all. As you can see, a lot of DC books on the pull list. Green Arrow finally had to get the boot. Not because it's bad. It's just because it's a little too reliant on Green Arrow history and you knowing it to really get the bang out of it. But if you're a longtime Green Arrow fan, that series is definitely for you. I'm most excited about Static Shadows of Dakota. Can't even lie. I've been loving that series by the way, a uh, huge shout out to Nicholas Draper Ivy. I designed a static shirt just on a whim and he bought one and it was cool. That's just an awesome thing. Now, got to give a huge shout out to all of the channel family. You guys who support the channel every single week, month with your dollars. We've got people. I just checked. We've got people who have been channel family for over a year. You got the coveted Batman badge and Dude, that is just insane. I really appreciate you guys. You guys making content on this channel possible. You guys sticking by and supporting even through a bit of a content drought because of just crazy stuff in the personal life. But look, I'm rambling. I appreciate you all. I will see you guys in another video real soon. Until then, stay safe, stay awesome, and uh, read something dope today. Peace.